a big one at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Big 12 title implications. Kansas State heads to Fort Worth to take on the TCU Horned Frogs. TCU, a three and a half point home favorite, total of 54 and a half. Latest numbers at BetUS. Amon G. Carter Stadium was rocking last week. It'll be rocking again this week, I would imagine. Kansas State won this matchup last year, 31 to 12. I don't think it'll be quite like that this year, but again, that's why we play the games. You never know. Kansas State, six and one against the spread, four and three straight up in their last seven against TCU. They have done a pretty good job in this matchup here. Uh, obviously a completely different TCU team under Sonny Dykes as opposed to uh, good old Gary Patterson there. Kansas State 5-1-1 one, one against the spread overall this season. TCU 4-1-1 one, one against the spread in their six this season as well. So these two teams are really good at covering numbers. Corby, let's start with you on this. Uh, Kansas State's defensive backs, number 22 coverage grade over at, PP, uh, excuse me, at PFF. Uh, they're number 22 PPA per pass. Uh, but they're number 66 in explosive rate allowed, and that could maybe be an issue with this TCU offense that has, of course, Quentin Johnston uh, and then Max Duggan just slinging that thing around. Uh, what do you see maybe between Kansas State and TCU? Uh, just a, a brief opinion on this one, uh, since you may not have known that we actually had this one on here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might have good. been my fault. I, um, Go ahead. No, you're, you're good. So I, I bet Oklahoma versus TCU early in the year, and uh, TCU put up, I believe, 55 and three quarters. And so I, I saw tweets after the game. They were, they were joking that the offensive coordinator is Garrett Riley, uh, Lincoln Riley's brother. And it just made me like go back and look. And I, I was actually impressed like going back and watching film, knowing who the offensive coordinator is in the offensive play calling of TCU. They've, they've made like strides, and, and they look very – competent as an offense on the other side kansas state three and a half point dog i think that they're in a really good situational spot with tc coming up a really big game uh, i see this total at 54 and i would lean towards the over pretty heavily there um, anything under 55 i really think 55 is a number that i would probably stop at but uh tcu's offense has looked very good in progressions towards like um, consistent i don't have the numbers in front of me but i imagine that they're they're just the ability to move the chains consistently is probably up there towards the top of the nation. And uh, at least from the games that I have been able to watch versus competent opponents, they have looked really good. So I lean the over. I, I really don't know a side. I would say probably Kansas State just situationally, um, but the over is the side I have. I think I know where Kyle is going with this one, just uh, reading the room there. But uh, that's I don't know. yeah. We'll we'll take a we'll take a, a look at this. So you mentioned the total there. The so we got winds of 17 miles per hour predicted uh, in this game. I would imagine that that's probably why this total has come down so much uh, because it opened at 59. It's all the way down to 54 and a half. Um, but I could totally see where you're coming from because I, I don't know that TCU can stop the run and I don't know that Kansas State can stop the explosive pass that TCU will have. Uh, Quentin Johnston, as I mentioned, absolutely rolling 386 yards receiving in the last two games. Their rushing defense is not good for TCU. Number 81 PPA per rush, number 77 in success rate. I don't know that they'll be able to stop what Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn do. Those two, by the way, have 82% of Kansas State's carries on the year. Just absolute usage juggernauts here. Uh, Adrian Martinez just makes that offense go. Kyle, uh, both of these teams are tied at number seven as far as giveaways per game. They do not turn it over. Penalties per game, they're both really good. TCU's number 28 and Kansas State number 35. Neither team a real field position advantage here. At TCU, their biggest problem here is number 106 in points per scoring opportunity defense. Kansas State finishes drives. They're number 29 on the offensive side. I wonder if maybe that uh, is why this thing is dropping so much, aside from what Corby mentioned with it being situational. Uh, give me give me some thoughts here on the Horn Frogs. I mean, just they've been through a gauntlet in the last four, right? SMU, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. Uh, just a lot of big time games week in and week out. Feels like with Kansas State coming off of a bye, this would certainly be a spot where they could drop one, right? Yeah, I mean, first uh, I love the chat. The chat's on fire over there. Just uh, is Parker on the hot seat? You know, get, like Gary said, you know, Parker and him disagreed. So Gary and him <laughs> had some words. <laughs> but but um, no, and then somebody saying Kyle take the over. Kyle won't take the over. I just I just love the predictions and the chat over there. Uh, you guys do a great job and make this a lot of fun for sure. Um, 
the wins are definitely what's made this go down. I don't think this total would go down like this outside of that. And we've seen massive line moves for all these games in the in the South, you know, Oklahoma and Texas area for for Saturday. Um, you know, depending on the place that you look, some places say winds of about 15, 20 miles per hour, gusts as high as 25 or 30. So, you know, if that comes to fruition, I think that is, you know, concerning to to take too high of an over. But I agree with Corby that this number is getting pretty low. You know, TCU games are going to be pretty high scoring in general. Uh, TCU's offense has been so well balanced uh, all year. You know, they can beat you running. They can beat you throwing. Uh, Kansas State, certainly the better defense of the two and a good running team. Uh, you know, I think if you look at the yards per play margin so far this year, TCU plus 2.23, which is seventh in the country, Kansas State plus 0 0.98 um, neg or, or on a yards per play margin, which is 35th. And Kansas State's strength of schedule is 28th and, and TCU 40th. So a bit of a difference, but not a big difference there. You know, I, I think, though, when you look at this game, I think it's really tough to have two thrilling wins in a row. You win at Kansas. Then you come back in that massive comeback win, really impressive stuff from TCU to beat Oklahoma State. I think it's tough to keep giving your A game every single week. Uh, so, yeah, like Corby said, the situational spot, you know, situational spot better in me. Kansas State is certainly my lean in this game. Uh, you know, I, I think I do feel a little bit bad wearing a Kansas State hat without Park, with Parker not being on the show. You know, that was it's not it's not me dissing his TCU Horn Frogs. I like that team as well. But. Um, I think Kansas State's in a good spot here and getting the hook with Kansas State. Uh, I, I would certainly we lean that way, thinking that Kansas State will have success running the football in this one. Martinez has been really good. You know, he's avoided those big negative plays. Uh, Deuce Vaughn's tough to slow down for anybody. So I, I would lean Kansas State in this one. I can definitely understand that. Those Kansas State defensive linemen, uh, they've got a, a pretty good pass rush there. Something to pay attention to in this game. If they can get pressure on Duggan, uh, it could be – could be interesting for sure. But yeah, situationally, it screams that you got to take Kansas State here. Uh, the line move it certainly says that uh, five and a half down to three and a half at this point. No official play from us. Part of that might be because we don't want to bet against TCU. And I, I think it's in our contract. I think we're legally obligated not to bet against TCU right now uh, with Parker not here. So maybe that's part of it. Uh, but either way, no official play on this one. But it will be a monster, monster game. Leans all around towards Kansas State and the over on this one. 